What's up guys, it's DDP back with another edition of Mavs Post Game. And this started off a lot more promising than it ended up. There are some good takeaways, but things did get really ugly towards the end. The Memphis Grizzlies beat the Dallas Mavericks 121-107 at the American Airlines Center. Now, it is worth mentioning the Grizzlies have been hot as of late. And it is worth mentioning that, obviously, the Mavericks are still, as you can see in the thumbnail, without Luka. So, not at full strength. KP is a major bright spot for the Mavericks lately, not just in this game, but in recent games as well. Without Luka, he has stepped up in a big, big way, and he becomes the, what, fourth Maverick now this millennium to have three consecutive games of 30 and 10. He joins Dirk. Luca and Josh Howard in that list. Yes, Josh Howard for older Maverick fans. By older, I mean just early 2000s because Josh Howard was out of here by, what, 2009, 10? Regardless, that is the outlook here for the Mavericks. KP scores 32 points and 12 rebounds. Has 24 points in the first half and is rolling. He's 8 of 16 at halftime, and the Mavericks are clicking However, a couple of trend breakers here. The Mavericks have been fantastic this year record-wise whenever they actually reach 30 points in the first quarter. Hot starts usually translate to victories for the Mavericks. That is not the case here because they do reach 30 points in the first quarter. And they're in this game. The second half offense isn't good. The second unit mightily struggles in this game. And they get flat-out blitzed at the end of the third quarter by the Grizzlies. And the Grizzlies bench was fantastic in this game. The, the Mavericks bench was pretty much garbage. Looking through here, there was at one point in the game, the, Mem the Memphis bench had 40 points compared to 9 for the Mavericks here. DeLon Wright off the bench had himself a brutal game. A negative 35 off the bench. 21 minutes, 7 points, 4 boards, 3 assists against his former team. Not good. Justin Jackson... We need to have a conversation about Jackson, I think. And I say that as someone who, coming into the year and all throughout the offseason, was probably one of his biggest supporters in Dallas. I think there might be a conversation to be had there because his struggles in recent weeks has been brutal. And I still think he could be a decent part on this team, but by no means is he a guy that you're like, no, we don't want to trade Justin. Like, if he's a part that you can put into a deal to make something happen, I think you do it. Now... Iguodala is off the table. We'll get to that in a minute as we get into trade talk. But for the most part, this is this is something I think Dallas needs to take a hard look at because I think he's a nice player who can help you. I'm no longer sold on the idea. Like I've seen enough from Dorian Finney-Smith stepping up now that what I perceive to be the need for Justin Jackson no longer seems as potent as it was before. So pertinent? Pertinent, not potent. Potent is not even a word. It's early. I haven't had my coffee yet. You'll have to forgive me. But uh, yeah, so Jackson really struggles here as well. Three points in 14 minutes on one of eight shooting. Brokov as well, 12 minutes, three points. Collie Stein, 12 minutes, four points, three boards. Courtney Lee gets 12 minutes, but eight points. He actually did a little something, three of four shooting. It's at the point for Jackson where Courtney Lee and even Antonius Cleveland, who got into the game briefly, I would almost argue they're a better play right now than Jackson. So we'll have to talk about that. But from the starters, Tim Hardaway Jr., man, ooh, 3 of 13 shooting. There's the, we've had a lot of good Hardaway this year, and when he's got Luka to set him up, you get a lot of good Hardaway. Now, he had a big game the other night against Indiana along with KP, and that was also without Luka, so you can't boil it down to just saying, hey, if Luka's not there, Tim Hardaway Jr. can't be reeled in. But 3 of 13, including 2 of 6 on threes, not a good showing from Tim Hardaway Jr. in 34 minutes. Dorian Finney-Smith, you know, he'll give you a nice big game like he did the other night where he gives you like a 15 and 12, and then he'll return with this where he's... Five points, five rebounds, three assists in 34 minutes. Two of nine shooting. Jalen Brunson, he was the only other bright spot for the Mavericks in this game. You know, I mentioned KP. Ten of, for KP, he was 10 of 20 from the field and 5 of 11 on threes. Um, seven of seven at the line. He's been shooting great at the line. One block, two steals for KP in 29 minutes. 
Very good from KP. It's unfortunate, and I'll, I'll talk about the third quarter in a second, but let me circle back to Brunson first. Brunson in 33 minutes gives you 20 points, two rebounds, and six assists on six of 14 shooting, three of seven from beyond the arc, and five of five at the line. Now, where this game really got away from Dallas was in the later parts of the third quarter. About six, about halfway through the third quarter, a certain trend started where the Grizzlies got red hot out of nowhere. It was tied at 71 all. Grizzlies got red hot, and Mavericks went ice cold. Grizzlies, in a 6-minute, 30-minute barrage, before the end of the third quarter, opened up a 100-78 lead. Yeah. Again, tied at 71 all, 178 by the end of the third quarter. In that time, Bobby Corella points out on Twitter, the Grizzlies had just one empty possession they got fast break buckets and some incre- incredible shooting from them, including from Jones, who was like 8 of 8 on the game. Just completely blew this thing wide open. Mavericks could do nothing from it. And to make matters worse, the Grizzlies were 11 of 21 from 3 at that point in the game. You're, you're going to be hard-pressed to do anything at that point. Uh, I called out earlier the Grizzlies bench at, at that point had 40 points. Uh, Mavericks had nine off the bench at that time. That's going into the fourth quarter. That's from Tyler Adams on Twitter, who reaffirms that. Uh, let me see here. Again, in this game, this isn't the final tally, but this is like three minutes left, three and a half minutes left. The Grizzlies had 56 points in the paint. That's half of their points. So while they were shooting lights out from three, they still weren't taking a ton of threes. Much, much more conservative in that regard than we are. But they got half of their points still right at the rim. Um, it, it, it's ridiculous how they did that. So from this is from Yaya Dubin on Twitter. He points out from the 602 to 10 to 123 marks of the third quarter. So less than five minutes, the Grizzlies outscored the Mavericks 21 to three, hitting four threes and holding Dallas to one of 13 shooting in that stretch. Good God! By the way, most of that damage came with their best players on the bench, the Grizzlies' best players on the bench. Now, also during that stretch, when the lead was about 8 to 10 points, it was getting away from Dallas, but it hadn't been blown open yet. You have KP there. He's holding his nose in the thumbnail, uh, going up for a rebound. Jackson, not our Jackson, Josh Jackson's elbow, comes out, cracks KP right in the nose, breaks his nose. It was gushing blood. Not Steve Nash, uh, Western Conference Finals. Was that the Conference Finals or Semifinals? Regardless, not Steve Nash versus the Spurs, broken nose, gushing, but a fountain from his nose. And he goes back back to the locker room. I think he ends up, in this case, uh, doing a little bit more. But he does have a broken nose, he confirmed after the game. He does get 32 points, so he keeps that streak alive. That's nice. That's really cool for him. Yeah, Bobby Corella points out here, I mentioned this earlier, three straight 30-point games, just the fourth Maverick this millennium to do so, joining Dirk, Doncic, and Josh Howard. So just 30-point games, three consecutive 30-point games, not 30 and 10 games. I thought that was a little out of the ordinary for Howard, as I said it. Grizzlies 41 points in the third quarter. Jesus. Uh... Yeah, and then we're getting into some of the other stuff I want to cover here. Here's something from Tim McMahon on Twitter I wanted to call out. I said that KP has been fire since Luka went down. He has really stepped up. This is from Tim McMahon on Twitter. Kristaps Porzingis has 88 points on 57.1 shooting in nine quarters since Luka got hurt. There were encouraging signs of the chemistry developing with that duo before injuries interrupted. But Porzingis is proving himself capable of being the go-to guy when Doncic isn't on the court. That is, I would say, an understatement there. Yeah. And that uh, streak for KP of 30 and 10, this is from Chuck Cooperstein. Actually, it's from Mavs PR on Twitter. Uh, But Chuck Cooperstein echoes that as well, uh, calling it a, a bright spot and an otherwise disappointing finish for the Mavericks in this game. It is the longest such stretch of KP's career helping him join this season. Luka, Giannis, and Kawhi as the only three players to accomplish that feat this year. Three straight games of at least 30 and 10. That's pretty pretty cool company there. And the fact that the Mavericks got two guys on that list and they're both 24 or younger. Is KP 25? I think he's 24. 24 or younger is pretty, pretty cool, if you ask me. So we're sitting in better position than you might think. 
But yeah, the Grizzlies in their 21-3 run just completely blew this thing open at the end of the third quarter. The Mavericks were more or less waving a white flag in the in the uh, fourth quarter there. Like I said, you saw a lot of minutes from like Courtney Lee. You even saw some Antonius Cleveland. Basically, the Mavericks had nothing else to work on, work on there at that point. The second unit completely failed the Mavericks in this game. The, the interior defense was really bad. The Grizzlies have been good, and they made some things happen for them. But, yeah, it's the eighth seed coming into the, at the time, sixth seed's house and smacking them around. The Mavericks have now dropped from the sixth seed to the seventh seed. They still got about four or five game cushion on the Grizzlies. But, yeah, OKC has moved with their win last night. The Mavericks' loss has moved now into sixth place in the Western Conference. You got to figure out this home thing, man. I think we're like one game over 500 at home. And it's it's not even like – it's not even a minor thing anymore. The Mavericks are so much better on the road than they are at home. And I understand circumstance can play uh, a factor in things. You know, you got to consider the context. This is just baffling, I think, at this stage of the game to be this – poor at home you almost you almost jokingly want us to be like the seven or eight seed if for no other reason than the fact that okay well we at least we know they can win on the road you know there's something like 17 and 6 17 and 7 on the road much better on the road than they are at home so we'll see what ends up happening with that Uh, i'm gonna wrap up this segment here and then jump back in with another segment covering some trade deadline talk the trade deadline is today i believe two o'clock central time So we'll be very much monitoring that, and I'll keep you guys uh, abreast of any updates that come out. So hang tight. Peace.